Hey all, welcome to Parker's Reefs. On today's episode, I'm gonna take you through the cabinetry, something I've been waiting for for a while now on my dream reef tank build. Alright, so as mentioned in the intro, today's the day I can finally share with you the cabinetry is here, it's 96% complete, it is on my reef tank and it has enabled me to put water in it, which is an exciting, super exciting milestone. It's been quite a journey to get here, mostly through, um, mostly because of COVID-19 uh, restrictions in uh, Melbourne, Australia, but also just because um, I guess I'm uh, fairly uh, pedantic and um, uh, fairly specific about what I wanted on this um, on the cabinetry for this Dream Reef Tank build. And along the journey, I've had a number of people saying, there's no way knowing you'd put cabinetry around that stand and sump, it's too nice. And all along, I've been a uh, big advocate for having high quality cabinetry around the tank. I feel like this needs to be a part of the uh, furniture of the house and um, needs to really complement the house and it really goes a long way to getting that uh, wife approval if you've got everything neatly tucked away inside some high quality cabinetry. Now, fortunately for me, I was able to come across a bloke called Hayden, who when I was selling, when I was breaking down my existing display tank, Hayden come down to uh, purchase some corals and I uh, just happened to mention, or maybe I saw his email address, that he worked for a kitchen design center called the Kitchen Design Center or Perennial Kitchens. And um, we got talking about uh, the cabinetry for my new tank and he said it's something they could absolutely do. In fact, he's done cabinetry for uh, reef tanks before. He has a reef tank himself, so he understands the complexities around um, moisture, around uh, salt and um, uh, corrosion. He understands the uh, waterproofing aspect of it. He also understands things like uh, fingerprints and um, uh, adjustability, all of the little uh, bits and pieces that just make reef tanks a little bit different from your standard cabinetry, he's well familiar with because he's a reefer himself, which that just made the process significantly easier. So Hayden and I got chatting, uh, before you know it, there's a few blueprints and some plans being sent back and forth. And uh, before you know it, we have some cabinetry ready to install. Now that was ready almost two months ago. It's been ready for some time now and we just couldn't get uh, the Kitchen Design Center down here to install it because they're in a stage four restriction area. I'm in a stage three restriction area and it legally was not possible for them to drive over that border, even though it's an invisible border, over that border to install the cabinetry. And um, we sort of held off because um, if you've been following the saga in uh, Melbourne, we've been sort of going two weeks at a time waiting for these restrictions to uh, lift and they have not. We finally reached breaking point and um, Hayden was an absolute gem. He managed to find a local installer that could meet the standard he was after. So. We got in touch with that installer. Hayden was able to deliver the items, um, just wasn't allowed to stay to install them, but he was able to bring them down and deliver. Then we got the local installer in to fit them all up. I'll run you through the process and then I'll show you my incredible cabinetry for my dream reef tank. So uh, let's get into it. All right, here are the items dropped off into my garage. Now, the first thing I should point out is we've gone for a uh, Alablaster pure matte finish, which is a, um, I guess it's a, a it's a white, but it's not a full, it's obviously a matte finish. We didn't go the full two pack high gloss white in the end because it uh, would show fingerprints a little bit too much. But um, this should be a nice modern look and really suit our house. I'm very keen on the color. You see there the uh, hood with the uh, Bloom servo drive motors. And then over in the background there, we can see some of the doors and end panels there. These uh, servo drive motors are gonna give the, um, the canopy some automation and um, some little uh, wow factor. Cost a fair bit extra, but um, so is everything on this uh, reef tank so far. See the end panels there. Obviously the blue is just a protective film so they don't get scratched in transit. Like I touched on, the color is a, um, it, it's not a pure white, but it's not far from a pure white with a matte finish. Now, first thing we needed to do is to move the uh, tank out of the way. So that's just been pulled out from the wall, hence why I had to leave it empty. I could not put water in it because when we put an additional uh, one and a half to two ton of water in the tank, it's not possible to move. Uh, you can see the little accessories cabinet over to the left there. That's just sitting there for the moment. That will eventually be put in position and uh, screwed in. But uh, that's one of the first pieces that go in because it's uh, the easiest to locate where it needs to be. Um, we've got an end panel there. We've got a couple of these temporary little struts which we'll use to hold 
the uh, canopy in position while the guys screw it in. And I say we, meaning uh, them. <laughs> I'm not installing any of this because uh, I would make an absolute meal of it. There's that accessories cabinet. It's obviously not quite screwed in there yet. But now it is screwed in and you can see those uh, temporary struts holding that uh, canopy in position. Now, the reason why they needed these struts there was because that canopy has to be bolted precisely in the right spot. The doors just hang off that. There's not a lot of adjustments. So it has to be very, very accurate where it is. And what actually has to happen is the guys are up in the ceiling right now, bolting it across um, some beams that run across multiple joists so that it can hold a whole heap of weight mainly because I said I may hang quite a lot of kilos of uh, lighting off it um, or other accessories. So they wanted to make sure it was super, super strong. Now, you can see some of the bits and pieces here. Uh, that's a little uh, door that blocks off the right-hand side. And uh, one more look at the canopy. It's just about bolted in there and we'll then move on to when they can then start mounting the rest of the canopy and hanging the doors off it, which you can see here. The Blum uh, servo drives are in place. A couple of the uh, panels are in place. You can see the right-hand side uh, door, I guess you'd call it, a little narrow door. The uh, little accessories cabinet is now bolted in position. And believe it or not, from here, there's actually not that much more to go. We pretty much need to push the tank back in place and uh, clip all the doors on because they've got these really nice little uh, hinges on them which allow you to just clip the, um, clip the panels on which makes life so easy if you need to remove them. Which I think we'll cut to that now so you can have a look at the uh, doors themselves opening and closing which is always exciting. This is the uh, moment of truth. You can see the uh, right-hand side open up there, the left-hand side open up. The uh, cabinet or the, the canopy door on the right-hand side also opens up as well, but um, that was just literally uh, moments after the guys had left. Um, pretty exciting times. Now, I did also mention that as soon as the cabinet was put into position, we were gonna be able to fill it with water. So um, sure enough, uh, as soon as the, the tank did not have to be moved anymore, or, um, my good mate Dave came over and uh, we tested out all the plumbing, make sure it was real good, and uh, then we let water run into this bad boy. And uh, here is the moment of truth, the first time the tank got wet with salt water. So uh, very exciting times. I'll let you enjoy this for a second and then we'll go in for a close-up look and I'll go over some of the uh, details of this cabinetry. You sent me to a new dimension One night, I never knew it was I played All right, I've probably toyed with you guys long enough now showing you the tank getting filled with water. I figured we may as well bring the camera into the uh, tank now and I can show you the cabinetry as it sits right now, which is about 96% complete. I'll run you through some of the things that are yet to be done. So uh, let's switch this camera around. I'll give you a bit of a tour. All right, so as you can see, we've got uh, the canopy in place there. All the doors are there and lined up. I've obviously still got to um, I've got to uh, work out the reed switches for the light um, in my cabinet um, so that they only turn on when uh, we open the door, but uh, that's a simple electronics project for me. Um, we've got the end panels in position. We've got the, the uh, door switches here. These open up the uh, canopies so I can press uh, and they all open up there. Gives very nice access up to the uh, light frame. Now this is a temporary setup at the moment. I will not be running uh, Red CT5s. I will be running Orphic OR3s for a little uh, spoiler alert, but uh, I just wanted some light in there while I'm working. We've also got this uh, nice little uh, door over on the side here, which you can just uh, open up and that gives access down the back of the tank, which is where I've got a uh, MP60 controller there. And I've also got my light frame motor here for the moment. So we can press that and then uh, Move that light frame up and down. Just to give you that full access up into the uh, tank. Ignore the uh, cable management up there for the moment. But um, as you can see, we've now got uh, 
very obstruction free access to the tank um, when you combine that with the beautiful uh, Euro brace so there's nothing in the middle of the tank there you can get uh, your work platform out and uh, access that tank really really easily so that's worked quite well I've obviously still got to um, uh, hook up my uh, automation onto this uh, light controller so that I don't have to have this um, have this connected via a physical button so I can just uh, do that where I like but uh, that will do for that and then uh, we'll close that door off and uh, we'll close these panels as well you see they've got a real nice soft close so they come very slowly down and close onto the uh, onto the panel itself much like the doors in fact I'll just switch to a wide view so you get a better view all right, so here's the doors again. Ignore my um, incredibly messy uh, menagerie of uh, cables in there for the moment. That's just a temporary setup. Now our end panels are fixed on with uh, what they call Keku clips. Um, that allows me just to pull those panels on and off. Um, they're the ones that don't need to be accessed all that often. And you can ignore the um, exposed stainless bolts on here. They have uh, some stickers which go over those, but um, I've just had them off while I'm adjusting all the doors. These panels, what they do here, we've got uh, six bolts on each. They go through um, into the T-slot, which have got some T-nuts on there so that uh, they don't actually physically bolt onto the frame. They've got uh, some little T-nuts that I'll show you on screen that uh, lock that into position. They basically clamp onto the frame. Then the uh, hinges just screw onto there. Much like um, the, the lids, you can uh, slam that close if you want to and uh, it's a soft close. You see how nice and gently that closes, it's absolutely beautiful. And then um, over on this side, we've got uh, some doors here. You can see the uh, filter roller is in effect now. The uh, skim is happening. I've got a video coming out very soon in relation to the, um, uh, the cycle that we're doing, um, but it's all ticking along very well. Now, you may be asking, Sam did mention that the, t the cabinetry was about 96% complete and uh, I'll run you through a couple things that need to happen. First of all, you'll notice up along the top here, we've got to get a plaster in because I want to continue this cornicing. I've obviously got to still paint that wall because that's cream and that's uh, the new color, but uh, we want that cornicing to come and follow the tank around. So it should come up and around, come all the way around here to make it look like it's completely built in. So that's yet to happen. That was never going to be done by the uh, cabinetry people, but um, uh, I've still got to chase down a uh, plasterer in this uh, COVID lockdown time. The next thing you'll see, and you can probably tell by the little bit of light sneaking through there, I've got to get uh, some of that uh, furry um, door seal stuff just to block a little bit of light coming out from uh, in between the cracks there and on the doors as well. That obviously won't be as much of an issue because uh, those lights will only turn on when um, the doors open, but uh, there will be a huge light in there. So I don't want this pink glow coming through the crack in the doors. Now, come over to our accessories cu uh, cupboard. This is where there's a little bit of work still to be done. We've got to get a, uh, a new panel up here. That panel wasn't cut correctly. So uh, we've got a new panel coming in to fill that there. This uh, side panel here, will need to come so that it goes all the way down to the ground. We had a little uh, miscommunication in uh, measurements there. So that will, we'll get a new piece of that that goes all the way down to the ground. And what we're gonna do as well is we're actually gonna make that another 15 mil wider to push this cabinet across because uh, in here, this end panel should line up flush uh, with this. And at the moment, there's just this uh, little gap here and uh, you can see we've got a little gap between the um, cupboard and the uh, tank that should all be flush. So um, that extra width in the panel there will finish that off nicely. And uh, that'll go obviously all the way down to the ground and uh, we'll be neat up here with all the cornicing in there will be all sweet. The accessories cabinet is a little bit of a mess at the moment whilst I'm working out uh, my electrical solution, but um, you can see we've got a number of shelves there. We've also got some uh, nice little convenient holes which go through to behind the tank. And then um, quite simply, just got a uh, little push hinge in there which uh, makes it nice and easy. The uh, top at this end doesn't have a motorized one because we obviously can't open that all the way but it does hinge open so you can get access from this end of the tank should you need to. See I mentioned about the uh, Keku clips. These panels here literally just pull out and then get taken away. So if there's something I need to do to access that uh, 
corner of the tank, it's quite easy to do so. But uh, these panels aren't really meant to go on and off all that often, but um, it's good to know that if I need to do some serious work in there, that uh, it's that easy to remove them. And uh, that's literally all that's to be done left on the cabinets. Oh, there is one other thing. We do also have um, remote controls, which is where I just used one then. Uh, we got remote controls for the, um, for the cabinet, so I can press this one here. And that opens up there. You may notice that uh, we're missing one. That's the one uh, over for the side here. That button was um, faulty from um, just out of the packet. So uh, the team are gonna get me a replacement one for that. But um, these two work no problem at all. And you see how beautiful and soft they close. Just um, absolutely stunning bit of gear. So um, I don't know. I don't know if that covers everything you guys need to know about uh, the cabinetry. Um, like I touched on the um, all the doors have got uh, their panels that mount onto the um, T-slot in here. Um, so we just use some counter sunk stainless bolts in there. They lock onto T-nuts. Um, so these panels can be, uh, they, you can actually remove that panel from the frame. It just bolts onto the, um, I'm not sure if you can see down here, bolts onto the uh, T-slot uh, channels there. Um, and uh, yeah, then you can just use your standard door cabinetry from there. So. In the end, it was actually relatively straightforward, but um, it did take a little bit of thinking through because traditionally with a timber stand or even with a steel stand, you would just screw, um, you'd get some self-tapping screws and you'd just screw this into the frame. I did not want that happening on my um, T-slot frame and unfortunately the distance that these need to go in did not align with um, the two channels on, um, on the, uh, on the T-slot frame. So they would have had to have screwed them into like about there, which I did not want. So. We come up with this system and I think it uh, works really, really well. And the best thing is if it doesn't work well, I can unbolt it and we can change it out, which is um, really cool. All right, guys, there you have it. That is the cabinetry in my dream reef tank build. I hope that's covered most of the details for you. I know there's one detail that uh, everyone's very curious to know, and that is the cost of something like this. Now, bear in mind, this is done by a high-end kitchen cabinetry company. This is not done by uh, your Uncle Dave in his uh, garage. This is done by the Kitchen Design Center with high quality finishes. The camera doesn't really bring up the nice, soft uh, feel of the cabinetry, the uh, per water waterproofed edges. Um, it's all been designed from the ground up to give me a good 15 years of lifespan on this, um, on this aquarium. The only thing that we're not 100% sure on is uh, the, the lifespan of the Bloom servo drives up in the canopy. Um, only because it's not a normal uh, installation for them, but uh, you can rest assured that uh, they are of the highest quality and uh, with a little um, uh, exhaust fan, which I have installed up in the uh, canopy up there, drawing uh, air constantly out of the canopy and up into the ceiling, we're hoping to keep the humidity down in there and hopefully uh, mitigate any issues there. But with all these things in mind, the, uh, the design, uh, the build, the delivery, and the installation, we came in around $5,000 Australian for this uh, cabinetry. Like I said, complete bespoke design, including um, all of the servo drives, the uh, doors on the right-hand side, the cabinet on the left-hand side, uh, the panels all around it, all the nuts, bolts, fixtures, everything all included. And personally, I think that's an absolute steal. And I'm fairly sure the uh, Kitchen Design Center did actually look after me on uh, pricing on that. So a huge shout out to Hayden and the uh, team from Perennial Kitchens for um, looking after me and making that happen. Now, if you sort of uh, spat a little bit of your soup out when you uh, heard that price, um, rest assured that if you don't want to go over the top like I did and uh, have those motor, uh, servo motor-driven uh, doors on your canopy, that can bring the price down about two or $3,000, which um, obviously makes a huge difference at the end of the day. But um, I mean, if you're a regular viewer of this channel, you're gonna know me by now. If there's something cool like that for this reef tank build in particular, I have to have it. And um, when I sat down with my wife to talk about it and said, look, I showed her some footage of the uh, motor drives um, in operation and I said, yeah, these cost a fair bit more, but uh, do you reckon we could stretch? And she's like, just do it. You know you're gonna um, kick yourself forever if you don't. And uh, as usual, my wife was 100% correct. So um, I'm personally super, super happy. The tank just, it looks a million bucks. <laughs> I know I've spent a bit of money on it, but it just really is coming together now. It's gone from a pile of parts to an absolute piece of living furniture. And we haven't even got rock or uh, fish or coral in there yet. So 
Things are on the up and up. If you're not a uh, subscriber yet of this channel, please consider doing so. It costs you no money, takes two seconds of your time. Click the uh, little subscribe button down in the corner there. That'll make sure you don't miss out on any future videos of this Dream Reef Tank build. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna leave it at that. If you have any questions about the cabinetry at all, um, check, uh, pop a comment in the uh, qu uh, comment section down below. Um, I'll put the links to the uh, Kitchen Design Center uh, website in the uh, description if you wanna get in touch with the guys there to design your Dream Reef tank cabinetry. I couldn't recommend anyone better myself. Uh, whenever you come across any sort of trade and you've got someone that is a reefer there, you know you're going to get the result you're after. So again, that's it from me guys. Stay safe. Keep reefing. Bye.